My family is originally from Haiti, and I am the youngest out of three beautiful daughters. <laughs> I am also the first to be born in America. Now, growing up in kindergarten, you know, I was the most curious, enthusiastic, energetic kid you could ever meet. And I was always asking questions. And whenever I got the answers to them, I always wanted to share it with somebody, whether it be my friends, my family, especially my mom. However, sometimes that would be a bit of a challenge because me and her had a language barrier between us. Now, of course, she spoke the basics of English, and I spoke the basic, basics <laughs> of Haitian Creole, but there were times where I wouldn't be able to understand her, and she would be asking me to do something for her. I'd be like, what? What are you saying? I don't understand. And if you have Caribbean parents, you would understand that they get irritated pretty quickly. <laughs> so <laughs> that resulted in me getting a butt whooping sometimes. And of course, so that led to my sisters and my dad being the translators for us. Of course, if one wasn't there, then the other one would translate. However, sometimes, you know, my family's very busy, and if nobody was there, then sometimes we would just walk past each other in the hallway like it was a ghost town and not say anything to each other at all. And you can imagine how frustrating that is, especially for a kid who's in kindergarten, because I just wanted to tell my mom everything, like how I learned two plus two is four and not eight, and how I mix red and blue, which makes purple, and how I learned how to jump rope, because I'm telling you, I was the worst jump roper known to mankind ever. <laughs> and so that was so important for me. But because of the fact that I couldn't properly communicate with her, it was so frustrating. So one day I decided to asked my sisters and my dad to teach me Haitian Creole. That didn't last very long. Um, <laughs> like I said, I was very curious and I asked way too many questions apparently, like why is the sky blue and why the grass grow out the ground and not the walls? And why is my name pronounced Katiana in English but Katiana in Haitian Creole? And of course, you know, my sister's being busy getting ready for college and my dad just working a lot. Um, they were like, okay, child, you asking too much. <laughs> and they didn't completely give up on me. If I had questions, of course, they would answer. But I was basically left on my own. So my mom and my dad, like I said, worked long hours at work. And whenever they came back home, they always needed help around the house. And so me being the youngest, I would have to help them out. However, that was frustrating for me because that interfered with the time of me teaching myself Haitian Creole. So what I would do is I would lock myself in the bathroom, pretend like I had a stomach virus or something, and just keep practicing, but they just kept calling me so it didn't really work out all the time. So fast forwarding to January 1st, it is also known as Haitian Independence Day, and it is tradition to drink soup jumu, pumpkin soup. Now, me being the picky little American that I was, I was like, ew, I don't want to eat that. Like, that looks nasty, yellow, and thick. Like, get out of here. <laughs> and so I asked my mom to make me something else. However, my siblings always made in front of me and were like, girl, you missing out. Like, this tastes so good. Like, look at all the meat in the soup. Oh, my gosh. I was like damn girl, we really dry in this house. Like, let's really try this. When I had the soup for the first time, I was like, damn girl, where you been all my life? <laughs> it tastes so good. And I remember us sitting at the table and it was set up as if we were like a, like, a mafia mob family. You know, like my dad sitting on one side, the devious kid sitting in the middle, and the wife sitting at the other end. And I remember sometime during dinner, my mom asked me in Haitian Creole, est-ce qu'il mange à bon? Is the food good? And for me, in that specific moment, everything kind of stopped because I was like, I understood what she just said. Like, I really understood what she just said. And me not realizing that I was kind of taking quite a while to respond back to her, my sisters were getting ready to say, okay, so she said, I was like, no, 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 it's okay, I got it. Like, I know what she said. And so I gathered up all that I was learning 
and teaching myself in the little bathroom. And I said, oui, moi j'ai à bon. Yes, the food is good. And the, t the table kind of got quiet, like everybody's surprised. And you know, my mom's eyes are bulging out of her head, ready to pop out, but they're not going to fall out yet. Because <laughs> she's really surprised that I really responded to her. Of course, I have a lisp, and young, when I was younger, it's really, really bad. So I kind of mispronounced a couple of words. But she still understood what I said. You know, at that time, you expect your family to support you, but you know, no, my sisters being the sisters that they were, they said, oh, the fake Haitian ought to speak Creole, oh. And so that like tore down my little confidence as a kid. And however, that moment was very inspirational for me because that gave me a piece of hope and also that showed me that I just broke down a piece of the language barrier that's stopping me and my mom from having a closer relationship. And now that's showing me that I can now take it a step further and continue to teach myself and completely tear it down. So now fast forwarding to today, I am proud to say that I can speak fluent Haitian Creole and my mom, <laughs> And my mom can speak fluent English, and the language barrier no longer exists between us, and we are as close as close could ever be as a mother and daughter should. Thank you.